Best Team for Scarlet and Violet will be out this Sunday, December 11th at 10 a.m. Eastern slash 7 a.m. Pacific. So make sure you all save the date. You're not going to want to miss it. Now that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have been out for a couple of weeks, we've now had a proper amount of time to figure out what Pokemon are truly the strongest in competitive Pokemon for these games. So today, I'm going to discuss the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. If you guys enjoyed these Scarlet and Violet top 10s and want to see more, make sure you leave a like on today's video and use that subscribe button to stay up to date on future content. Before we get started with number 10, I want to set up some ground rules I used for today's list. We'll be going over the top 10 Pokemon besides the box art legendaries, Koridon and Miraidon, as these Pokemon have a clear edge over everything else in the entire games, as they're the only two box art Pokemon. I will still discuss Pokemon that have been banned from the OU tier though, as these Pokemon at the very least weren't made to rival Koridon and Miraidon. If you were looking for Pokemon only allowable in the OU tier, I did come up with an honorable mention section where I'll briefly go over the runner-ups today. From 14 to 11, we have Glamora, Kingambit, Corviknight, and Shiyu taking up these slots. Glamora has established itself as the strongest hazard setter through the entire history of competitive Pokemon thanks to its ability Toxic Debris, which when attacked by a physical move, you will set up Toxic Spikes for free. In tandem with Stealth Rocks, Toxic Spikes, and Spikes, Glamora is probably the best hazard setter in the game. With King Gambit, we have two strong abilities being Defiant and Supreme Overlord. The new signature ability of Bisharp that boosts its damage output based on how many allies have fainted. King Gambit's able to establish itself as one of the strongest wall breakers in this tier thanks to both of these damage boosting abilities. Up next is Corviknight. Corviknight keeps itself as a mainstay in OU thanks to options such as Defog and the strong Steel and Flying type. Corviknight only misses the top 10 due to recovery moves being nerfed to only have a maximum of 8 PP, which hurts Corviknight's ability to stall opponents in tandem with pressure. Finally, we have Chiyu, which is one of the strongest special wall breakers in the OU tier thanks to Beads of Ruin, which decreases the opponent's special defense by 25%. With the monstrous fire and dark typing, the only issue with Chiyu is sadly the average bulk, as well as an average 100 base speed tier, allowing it to be easily outsped by opponents. Anywho though, let's hop into our actual list now. Going into our 10th Pokemon, we have Cyclozar. Cyclozar ends up establishing itself as one of the strongest pivots we've ever had in competitive Pokemon. With its signature move Shed Tail, it's able to set up a substitute that passes into another Pokemon in exchange for 50% of its health. While there's another Pokemon, Orthworm, that gets this move, Cyclozar sets itself apart from Orthworm due to its hidden ability Regenerator. Regenerator allows Cyclozar to gain back one third of its health every time it switches back in. So you actually lose very little health utilizing this move. Cyclozar also has a few more tools in its move pool that allow Cyclozar to shine in the OU tier. With moves such as Rapid Spin, Knock Off, and Taunt, you're able to use Cyclozar in order to function as a perfect utility Pokemon on your team. If you're too low on health after using Shed Tail, Cyclozar also has the move U-Turn to keep momentum going into other Pokemon on your team. Cyclozar functions similar to Tornadosterian last gen, where it would either keep momentum going, use knockoff, or remove hazards in order to support your team. Speaking of Tornadus T, Cyclozar actually matches its high speed tier at base 121, which allows Cyclozar to utilize Shed Tail to bring in new Pokemon before your opponent can even land a move to stop this. Overall, Cyclozar is able to establish itself as one of the greatest pivots Pokemon has ever created, landing itself at number 10 today. Our ninth best Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet is the new Paradox Pokemon, Great Tusk. Great Tusk is one of the many top tier Pokemon that were from this classification, with most Paradox Pokemon being given a 570 base stat total, with very optimized stats and one of two particular abilities. In Great Tusk's case, it was given the ability Protosynthesis 
which boosts your strongest stat either anytime you're in the sun or the first time you send Pokemon with Protosynthesis in if they're holding the booster energy. If your strongest stat is speed, this is a 1.5 times boost, whereas any other stat receives a boost of 1.3 times. This makes Great Tusk able to absolutely shatter teams, especially in tandem with its insane 131 base attack stat. With 14 Paradox Pokemon, what makes Great Tusk able to stand among the top 10 though? The biggest reason for this is probably due to Great Tusk's typing of Fighting and Ground, which is easily one of the strongest offensive typings we've ever seen. Great Tusk also comes with not only close combat, but as well as the new ground type move Headlong Rush, which is essentially a ground type close combat. Basically, unless you're a flying type or have the ability levitate while resisting fighting moves, you're going to get crushed by one of these two stabs. With coverage options such as Knock Off, Ice Spinner, Play Rough, Stone Edge, and many other options, Great Tusk has easily established itself as one of OU's strongest wall breakers. Moving into our number 8 slot, we have another new Paradox Pokemon being Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon's another past Paradox Pokemon like Great Tusk, so Roaring Moon was gifted the ability Protosynthesis as well. Unlike other Paradox Pokemon, however, Roaring Moon is the only Paradox Mon that has a 590 base stat total. Roaring Moon has an astronomical base 119 speed stat, as well as a 139 attack stat which allows it to destroy opponents before they even have a chance to fight back. In tandem with this Dark and Dragon typing, Roaring Moon's able to establish itself as one of the best physical options in the tier. While Dark and Dragon has a clear weakness in the fairy typing, there are so few viable fairies this generation, with the only two in the OU tier currently being Grimmsnarl and Iron Valiant. There's certainly the route of utilizing Terrastall to become a fairy type too. Roaring Moon is arguably one of the greatest candidates to use this mechanic as well. Roaring Moon uses Terra types such as Dark and Dragon to boost stabs, Fire type when you utilize Roaring Moon on Sun Teams, Flying type sets that use the item Booster Energy as well as the move Acrobatics to tear through teams, Ground types to boost the damage of Earthquake which is one of its strongest coverage moves, and even Steel or Poison in order to combat other fairies. Despite this Mon being so offensively terrifying, we somehow were given 7 Pokemon that appear to be even stronger than Roaring Moon. Going into the 7th best Pokemon, we have our last returning Mon, Dragapult. Yeah, you heard me right. The top 6 slots are going to all be new Pokemon. Despite Dragapult being such a terrifying offensive threat due to its high speed and incredible typing, we somehow received 6 Pokemon even stronger than it this generation. But what allows Dragapult to still hold its own in the OU tier currently? Similar to Roaring Moon, Dragapult is able to take advantage of the Terrastall mechanic, though in Dragapult's case, it primarily relies on only utilizing the Ghost or Dragon stabs. Dragapult typically will utilize one of two movesets, with the first being the Choice Specs moveset. Dragapult's spec set with Terra Dragon or Ghost allows Dragapult to boost its special stats even further, which is pretty amazing for Dragapult due to only having a base 100 special attack stat. This helps Dragapult break even the strongest wall breakers in the OU tier, as you're always going to boost one of these monstrous offensive typings. The other common set I've seen going around would actually be the Choice Band move set, which strictly runs Terra Ghost. Banded Dragapult will utilize the move Terra Blast to allow itself to finally have a consistently useful physical Ghost Stab move here, which allows Dragapult to shatter teams. Between Terra Blast Ghost, Dragon Darts, and U-Turn, Dragapult establishes itself as a terrifying wall breaker in the OU tier that teams struggle to figure out whether it's running physical or special until it's too late. Coming in at our number 6 spot, we have the new coin Pokemon, Goldango. Goldango's the new Ghost and Steel type this gen, that honestly has proven to be a massive threat and competitive, with an incredible 133 special attack stat while having Nasty Plot to boost this even further, Goldango proves to be an incredible wall breaker for the OU tier on the special side. Goldango can also utilize the move Trick to become an incredible Choice Scarf option, both while holding Scarf as an offensive piece, as well as while getting rid of the Scarf to cripple defensive Pokemon such as Corviknight and Toxapex. 
But what makes Goldango truly special is its signature move, Good as Gold. Good as Gold makes Goldango immune to any and all status moves, which provides some really incredible benefits when you look beyond just face value. While I'm sure a lot of players will assume this only applies to moves such as Thunder Wave or Will-O-Wisp, this applies to every status move. Goldango can utilize this to avoid moves such as Taunt, Parting Shot, and even Defog. This has established Goldango as the best option in all of Pokemon history to keep hazards on the field, as it not only blocks Defog, but due to its ghost typing, it also blocks Rapid Spin. Our fifth place option is probably the best Pokemon currently left in the OU tier, Qian Pao. If you somehow haven't played with or against Qian Pao yet, the best comparison I can make is comparing it to a Mega Weavile. Qian Pao not only matches Weavile's 120 base attack, it also has a higher base speed stat at base 135 and a significantly stronger ability thanks to Sword of Ruin. Sword of Ruin is Qian Pao's signature ability that drops the defense stat of every Pokemon on the field besides itself by 25%. This allows Qian Pao to absolutely shatter even the best walls in the tier, even before you account for Terra Steel options such as Electric for Corviknight and Dondozo, or even a stab from Ice or Dark to boost your damage even further. If this wasn't enough, Choice Scarf Pokemon aren't even enough to necessarily defeat Qian Pao. Qian Pao has two forms of priority under its belt, between Ice Shard and Sucker Punch, which allow Qian Pao to sufficiently get past any sort of Choice Scarf option in the tier that would otherwise threaten it. Your best way of taking out Qian Pao, in my opinion, would be to utilize a first impression Pokemon such as Low Kicks or Slitherwing, as these would both be able to potentially break Qian Pao with a plus two priority attack before it can shatter your team. Starting off our Pokemon that got banned to Ubers this gen, at number 4, we have none other than Houndstone. Houndstone is up here for one reason, and one reason only, being Last Respects. Outside of this highly overpowered move, Houndstone truthfully doesn't even hold a candle to most of our list in general, let alone our top 4. But this move allows Houndstone the ability to make Dracovish seem like an RU Pokemon at best. Last Respects is a 50 base power move that gains an extra base 50 power for every ally of yours that faints during the battle. This means you'll cap at potentially a base 300 power ghost attack if Houndstone is the last surviving Pokemon. While this move is very broken, we've had really overpowered moves on really garbage Pokemon such as Ficious Rend on Arctivish that ended up not getting banned to Ubers. So what makes Houndstone good enough when paired with this move to get the ban? Well, between its ghost typing and the ability Sand Rush, Houndstone is provided with one of the best offensive typings in the game, while also an ability that doubles its speed just by keeping Sand up. Not only this, but Houndstone still has priority in the form of Shadow Sneak, which it can use to finish off opposing Pokemon that were left with a sliver of health after last respects. You also have coverage for common ghost checks through moves such as Play Rough and Body Press, which allow Houndstone to basically go unchecked if your opponent somehow managed to find a viable switch in to last respects. Going into our top three, we have none other than Palafin. While I mentioned you shouldn't use Palafin in your actual in-game journey, in competitive Pokemon on the other hand, this is an absolutely monstrous Pokemon. The ability Zero to Hero allows Palafin's stats to rival Slackings, and all you need to do is switch Palafin out a single time. Unlike Slowking though, your drawbacks end after making this singular switch into another Pokemon. You now are gifted a 160 base attack stat and a base 100 speed stat, which makes Palafin into easily one of the strongest wall breakers imaginable. Palafin is proven to not only have the ability to be a strong wall breaker this generation with its choice band moveset, but it also has the ability to be a valuable stall breaker. Thanks to Taunt and Bulk Up, Palafin is able to even muscle past some of the strongest walls in the OU tier, such as Toxapex or Corviknight. Typically, these sort of movesets would consist of Taunt, Bulk Up, Drain Punch, and Jet Punch. Jet Punch gives you a base 60 water type priority option, Drain Punch gives you recovery, and then you also have Setup through Bulk Up and Taunt to stop opposing walls. While Palafin will probably struggle to prove its potency in Ubers due to how dragon heavy the metagame is, it still was a very obnoxious Pokemon for the OU tier, lending itself at number 3.
Our runner up on today's list is none other than Iron Bundle. Iron Bundle is probably our only future Paradox Pokemon to make the list today, which means we need to go over quickly what Cork Drive does. Cork Drive is the signature ability of all future Paradox Pokemon, which basically has the same function as Protosynthesis, however, instead of having the Sun set up, you need Electric Terrain up to activate this without booster energy. Iron Bundle will typically utilize this to outpace OU's fastest choice scarf Pokemon in order to become nearly impossible to handle offensively or defensively. With Iron Bundle's stab combination of water and ice, as well as the move Freeze Dry, if you were looking to switch into Iron Bundle, you basically needed to utilize Blissey on your team. Even if Iron Bundle finds itself in a sticky situation, however, you can just flip turn out in order to switch into another Pokemon on your team. With a lot of walls losing the move Teleport this gen, most walls no longer have this luxury of switching around Iron Bundle to keep up with the momentum it provided to offensive teams, making it that much more of a dangerous Pokemon to face. Iron Bundle will definitely still have a fun time in the Ubers tier as a strong offensive response to Koridon and Miradon, so at least it won't struggle to keep up in the tier like our other two banded mons so far. For the strongest Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, we have none other than Fluttermane. Fluttermane is truthfully the closest we've gotten in a while to non-legendary Pokemon reaching box art quality, with the last examples being Mega Lucario and Mega Salamence. Between its 135 and not only special attack, but also speed, as well as the monstrous fairy and ghost typing, Fluttermane has established itself as the ultimate anti-legendary Pokemon in the Ubers tier. Fluttermane's also able to utilize Terrastall to become an even more deadly wall breaker in competitive. Whether Terrastall Ghost to increase the damage of its ghost type attacks, or Fairy to avoid taking super effective damage from moves such as Shadow Sneak or Sucker Punch, Fluttermane's able to be an offensive terror in Ubers. If this wasn't enough, with the ability Protosynthesis, Fluttermane can utilize this to avoid the speed tie with both Koridon and Miradon, which would otherwise be able to actually revenge KO this Pokemon. Fluttermane already was an absolute terror on the OU tier, but now it's even causing problems for the Ubers tier due to how few checks to either Fairy or Ghost exist, let alone checks to both typings. So that's our list for the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. These are, in my opinion, the strongest Pokemon in competitive to use this gen. But let me know what you think is the best Pokemon this gen in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you remember to leave a like on the vid and use that subscribe button to stay up to date on future Scarlet and Violet content. Trust me, we got plenty more coming. Thanks for watching the video and for coming through and enjoying Scarlet and Violet with me. We've got so much content coming surrounding Gen 9 through the end of the year and beyond, including the top 10 strongest Pokemon, the best team for the games, and much more. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. When we get to 5,000 subs on the channel, we're going to have a new series related to Scarlet and Violet that will be exclusive to there, so go subscribe. Also, if you're into fan fictions or Genshin Impact, check out Mystic Reads and Tybotchinary. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content over there, and I do a bunch of theories and lore videos surrounding Genshin Impact. So come join me over there at that Vulture boat. That's all for now. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time for more Scarlet and Violet content.